Well, this whole story starts with God, and the Bible's clear that there is only one true God, and that one true God has made all things. He's made the mountains, the planets, the stars, the oceans, everything. And part of the everything that God made is human beings. And He made human beings to live for Him, to worship Him, to enjoy Him, to find satisfaction in Him. Uh, the Bible is clear that we are created for God's glory, uh, to show how amazing and how beautiful and how awesome He is, uh, and to project that to the world around us. Uh, but only a couple chapters into the Bible in the book of Genesis, uh, in, the cha in chapter 3, you have mankind choosing to disobey God. You have the first human beings choosing to disobey God. And really what this is, is just an act of treason against their Creator. Uh, they've, they've chosen to say with their actions, we know better than God, we're going our own way, uh, we're going to decide how to run things. And so from the first human beings, Adam and Eve, on down to yourself and myself, we too are part of this rebellion. We have all sinned, we have all turned away from God, disobeyed God, rejected God, and chosen to go on our own path. And so uh, no one gets off clean in this. We all have uh, dirty hands and we have offended a good, holy, separated from sin God. Um, and the Bible is clear um, that there is no one good. Uh, Jesus himself says that no one is good but God alone. Um, and I know for some of you guys you may be thinking that you're not all that bad, that you're a pretty good person. Um, but just think if I'm uh, playing skate with a five-year-old kid, I might appear pretty good, but next to Paul Rodriguez in skate, he's going to shut me down. You know, and so maybe next to uh, someone who's not very good, I may look good, but next to someone who's really good, I'm exposed for what I really am. And so you have to see that that's the case with you and God, that next to Him and His perfection, you are not good. The Bible would even say that your righteous deeds are the best stuff you can produce is like filthy rags to God. And so this creates a problem because the Bible also is clear that God is just. That if, if God is a good God, if He's just, if He does not let evil go, and you have done evil and I have done evil, that means there must be a punishment dealt. I mean, think of it, uh, you know, in 2011, our day, that if, if a criminal um, commits murder uh, and he's definitely guilty and a judge just lets him go, that's gonna f people are going to flip. I mean, because judges are called to do justice. They're called to do what's right what's upright and what's good. And so what's good for a judge to do to a guilty criminal is to sentence him for his guilt. And so God being a good judge um, and being perfect must deal punishment for your sin and for my sin. So the Bible is also very clear that the wages of sin is death. So the payment deserved for this rebellion against God is death. So that now every one of us will die. That's part of the curse and mankind turning away from God now since we turned away, the world that we live in with death, with brokenness, with pain, with suffering is now a result of that turning away from God. And not only physical death is what's deserved to us, but the Bible is very clear. Jesus himself says, I believe 11 times uh, in the Gospels, that hell is also what's given. That hell is what's deserved for turning away from God. And so for now, uh, so now everyone who has rebelled against God, separated from God, deserving death and ultimately deserving hell which is eternal torment or eternal punishment and is the due payment and punishment for turning away from your creator um, and God is and I know this is a very unpopular idea in our day uh, but God is angry with the rebellion against him God is not pleased um, all is not well between us and God there is actually a war between us and God the Bible would call us enemies with God and so we find ourselves in a, in a hole that we cannot climb out of. We find ourselves in a very, very um, scary place, in a very, very dangerous place. Um, but the beauty uh, of the good news of the gospel is that God has done something about this, that he hasn't just left mankind to themselves, but he has done something about this. And that something that he's done is sending his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth 2,000 years ago. And Jesus walked the earth that we walked, but he lived a perfect life like we can't live so he lived a perfect life but not a not a painless one by any means it was a very painful life uh, but it was a perfect one he did not sin he did not rebel against God he perfectly obeyed God and then at the end of his life which was part of the plan all along he died on a cross and then three days later Jesus Christ came back from the dead and defeated death he beat death and so what this means now uh, for his death and for his resurrection is that every single person in this world who 
the Bible says, repents and, and believes, so turns away from their sin and trusts in Jesus Christ, will be forgiven by God, will be pardoned by God. Um, because the Bible speaks about how Jesus um, died in, in the place of sinners. There's many different places in the Bible where it speaks of him being that substitute, of the one being um, crushed for our iniquities and pierced for our transgressions. So Jesus went in that place between God and man and said, I'll, I'll take the punishment, I'll be the one uh, who will take that blow, that, that wrath, that anger, that justice, so that all those who run to me, all those who trust in me, uh, will not be given what they deserve, but instead they will be given grace. They will be given God's free gift and His kindness of forgiveness and eternal life with Him forever. Um, so this story is about an amazing God who in love sends His Son to die a death He doesn't deserve for people who deserve hell. But instead of getting the hell they deserve, they can be with the God they don't deserve and enjoy Him forever upon trusting in Jesus Christ. And so that's the invitation today, man, for you to put your trust in Jesus Christ, to really bank on Him, really rely on Him, really believe in Him, um, and to give your sin to Him and turn away from it. Um, and so this is uh, what is put before you. Um, and every single person who trusts in Jesus Christ, when this short life is over, they will go to be with Him forever and enjoy Him forever like they were created to do originally um, before mankind's rebellion. But all those who do not trust in Jesus Christ will be separated from God in eternal torment forever. Um, and so it's a very weighty, it's a very weighty thing, man. Um, so please don't put it off. Put your trust in Jesus Christ today. Um, he's better than all the world. I beg you um, to believe in Him. So that's all I got for now.